Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. So today I wanted to also take maybe like the afternoon off. So I'm sorry if I'm rushing this, but there's like some random high yield ETF news that I didn't get to like this past week. So Defiance has only like the US zero TTEs plus like trust, but things are about to change. I this is still not final, but I take take it that since there's a prospectus update. Maybe this is a good sign. Uh, so EMY and EFAY, they've kind of, I guess they've been working on this for a while. So this this update was dated uh, February 3rd. And again, this is like a, a monthly distribution ETF, but they're using weekly options on what I think should be e EEM and EFA. So this could be a nice for people that want to diversify away from just like US stock based products. So I think, you know, like for myself personally, I think this could be a very interesting fit. Uh, because like, for example, like Clip, it hasn't been exactly doing like the greatest. So any additional diversification globally, I think would be beneficial for myself and maybe for you guys too. So they're they're aiming for at the money in the money weekly puts. So it'll be interesting to see how this performs out in the wild if it does get approved. And they mentioned that you know it could extend up to like one month as well for like the, the options. And nothing changed for like in terms of like managers. So it's still our old friends, Mr. J and and company. And here is like the uh, well, I guess this isn't too exciting or surprising, it's 99 basis points. So at least they updated the expense ratio part. And then on to like not so exciting news from Direxion. So this thing was, was I guess like re uh, released on like the SEC website, like January 22nd, but I looked on the website. So I guess this is also pending approval. So I didn't, and these, I'm I'm not as interested. So basically, this magma, it, I I'm guessing is kind of like their version of the Magnificent Seven, but it's a a double. I guess like the double the performance of. Of like the, I guess like the, like say for example, I'm trying to think like maybe like something like Feppy or maybe like the Y Mag, like in theory should should give you like double the performance but like price performance this isn't these aren't uh i guess like income etfs so th these might be like an interesting hedge against like a uh, price depreciation again it, it depends and then also there's like these this ai double double x and then there's also like a bear double x and then same thing with uh china there's a double x and then the, there's like a bear double x so these I I'm kind of not that exciting. Like first, like the expense ratios are, are kind of weird. It's like 107 basis points, and then like the China, but like this bull one is 1.18. So I'm not sure what's going on here. I to be honest, I'm not that excited about any of these. But you know, I guess maybe like for for some folks, this might be appealing, but not for me. And then Global X had something interesting, like like what they call like a quality dividend cover call ETF. So this might be worth digging into like further, I guess like when it does come out. So this thing didn't even have like a date. So I, I don't know how far along this is. I'm guessing not very. Uh, again, the, none of these are, are final. I just happened to kind of stumble upon this. And this one is based off of something interesting uh it's a q div at the money buy right index so this could be um i guess like when they provide more details i would like to dig into this some more and then same thing with this guy like this is a global x mlp so this is like master limited partnerships so these are basically like oil pipelines so for myself i'm also interested in this as well i want to see what's in it i guess when they like when the time comes and then also it's also a cover call etf uh, I, again, I'm sorry I didn't have like much time to kind of like dig through this some more. But I mean, you you know, these guys are a preliminary prospectus anyway. So I want to see like when they when they update this, maybe that's when the time will, or hopefully like I'll have actual time to dig through this like some more. And what I like about this these particular funds, 
for like I'm looking at the managers. There's two CFA charter holders, and then there's also like a financial engineer. So this could be really interesting. Uh, but you know, again, like this is all like very preliminary. So we'll see. We'll just have to see. And finally, I spy. I just want to thank uh, Living on High Yield and this this person. Uh, so they they finally announced a dividend. Again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm kind of late to this. Like, but it's just been kind of hectic. So, and then this person, Living on High Yield, mentioned there there might be a Nasdaq version coming out on February 9th. So you know, uh, hopefully this is true. I again, I didn't get a chance to look through this. I couldn't find like like this particular SEC filing. So. But it's probably because I'm just like tired and I'm just like I'm I'm doing too many too many things at the same time. Um, I'm a little miffed about the iSpy distribution. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's a pretty decent dividend, like fifteen percent, approximately. And I'm hoping it'll be be a little bit higher as the as the year progresses because I, I expect volatility kind of bump up a little bit maybe hopefully we'll get up to maybe 18 or 20 and of course like we we will just have to follow like the underlying index itself just to get an idea but so far i think they're off to a good start what i don't what i'm not too happy about is it's they're kind of bunching it up because it, it's paying like on the beginning of the month so it should come out february 8th and I mean, it's not, again, it's not, this is like a first world problem. I would prefer that they pay like near the end of the month, just like for diversification in terms of like dividend or distribution scheduling. So, you know, I guess like I, I prefer they wouldn't like compete directly with like the fines or yield max in terms of like the actual distribution payouts. But I guess it is what it is. We'll just have to see like what the other guys do, like themes ETFs. So I think like overall it's still a good time to be alive. I wasn't too thrilled with like the direction. I I took a look at him just like the expense ratio wasn't that great. But then the, the global X ones could be interesting, but again, uh details to to come. Like right now there's no expense ratio or like much intelligence on this, so we'll just have to see. But you know, of course, like you know, feel free to diversify with other ETFs. You know, even like the old fashioned dividend aristocrats and like even treasuries themselves could offer like a good diversification measure. And of course, like the usual risks are some of these are like on the high side, like, and then some of these are unknown. And I, my guess is that we probably, you know, we definitely don't have any control over the option strike selection. And I'm hoping that they'll be more transparent in terms of like the, the actual trades themselves. Uh, you know, implied volatility could collapse and you know these products can definitely get cheaper and then the yields won't be consistent from month to month although global x seems to they have a like the more conservative so that that could be good thing for like these new global x etfs and so far we can't borrow against most of these yet so and then if you like this type of content uh please consider giving this a like uh all subscriptions are you know are welcome and as you can see, I can I'm kind of pooped, so I'm trying to get this out at a re at a reasonable time. So I hope you enjoy like the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.